A migraine is an intensely painful type of headache, characterized by pain on only one side of the head, often accompanied by nausea and vomiting, and a hypersensitivity to light and sound. A migraine headache can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. The pain is often so severe that you can't do anything but lay down in a dark, quiet room and wait for it to go away. Sometimes a migraine is preceded by an aura, that is, a sensory disturbance. Most auras present as an arc-shaped spot to the side of the visual field, often appearing as a pattern similar to black and white static. Migraines can have identifiable triggers, such as eating certain foods, or foods with certain preservatives or chemicals, or not eating regularly, or having your sleep patterns disrupted, exposure to smoke or odors such as perfume, as well as being stressed out. People who tend to experience migraines have a doubled or even tripled risk of experiencing a stroke or a transient ischemic attack, also known as a mini-stroke. There is a degree of genetic influence on whether a person will experience migraines. I have migraines, my mother has migraines, and her father has migraines. I've had migraines since I was at least five years old, and I experienced them on a weekly basis, if not more frequently, until I was 14. That was when I left school. Since then, I only have a migraine perhaps once every few months, if not even less often. I believe my migraines are highly correlated to stress. When I was in school, I was under a great degree of stress. Now that I'm not, there's far less stress. My mother and grandfather, however, still have migraines very frequently. My grandfather perhaps once a week, my mother on an almost daily basis. For migraines of a merely moderate intensity, the first line of treatment is similar to that for regular headaches. Simple over-the-counter painkillers such as aspirin, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and naproxen. But for more severe migraines, these are often insufficient. In this case, there are other drugs, such as the tryptan family, which are very effective in reducing the symptoms of a migraine. My mother has found that sumatriptan, produced by GlaxoSmithKline as Imitrex, works best for treating her most severe migraines. The problem is that Imitrex is a prescription drug, and in the United States, GlaxoSmithKline held the patent on it until recently. The result is that eight doses of Imitrex cost $220, and when you experience migraines frequently, this quickly becomes prohibitively expensive. In comparison, in the United Kingdom, sumatriptan tablets are available over-the-counter at a cost of about $15 for two tablets. Now, if you have ever experienced a migraine, then you know very well that people will do practically anything to make the pain stop. In earlier times, people would drill holes through their skull in the hopes that it would stop the pain. So if it comes down to pain or your money, they'll get your money every time. If you need Imitrex just to function in everyday life, GlaxoSmithKline effectively has you by the balls. But as I said, they only held the patent on sumatriptan in the US until recently. Now, generic forms of sumatriptan are available. When a drug becomes generic, that means anyone can produce and sell it. This is intended to foster competition between drug producers, ultimately lowering drug prices for consumers. In theory, that is. When my mother recently went to pick up her Imitrex prescription, the pharmacy informed her that a generic version was available. Guess how much generic sumatriptan costs over here in the good old US of A? $220 for eight pills, just like before. And now, classic Imitrex is $240. Isn't that just incredible that a drug being available in generic form doesn't even change anything, and the people who need medication are still getting screwed? How is it that the UK can sell this very same drug at a fraction of the cost, and yet this is not possible in the US? There are people who need this drug. For them, not taking it is not an acceptable option. They need this drug just so they can be moderately functional in their daily lives. They need it so they can hold a job. 
They need it so they can attend school. They need it just to live their lives without being constantly crippled by unbearable pain. And to charge them what are frankly extortionate prices for this drug amounts to little more than a protection racket. It strikes me as unreasonable in the extreme that these prices would not change whatsoever when the drug became generic. This is one of those things that truly outrages the conscience. Surely the makers of sumatriptan have found a highly profitable market, but at what cost? 